What is up, folks? Casual Dad here, and tonight we are starting on the third Tyrannic War Part 2. <laughs> and because I was planning for this video, I haven't actually played any games in this yet, but I've been really, really excited about it. So in my last video, I covered the third Tyrannic War Part 1, where you played as Space Marines against the Tyranids. A couple key things to highlight that were really important in that one is with Space Marines, your two strongest decks were going to be um, Helbrecht, the Dark Ain or, <laughs> excuse me, the Black Templars, uh, and then Tolmeron, the Blood Angels, because both of them had really powerful themes where they were focused either very heavily on melee or very heavily on ranged. Their cards hit very hard quickly and then also became more powerful as the game went on, so you wouldn't run out of steam. Now, I personally found that Hellbrecht was significantly more successful and beat the entire campaign. Um, I only switched to Tolmeron at the end to do max bonus to intentionally lose a couple games so that I could get that Mephiston, or the uh, free card copy up here. But so I'm particularly excited about this one um, because we get some of the new Tyranid cards. And this is the second Tyranid Taunt card, and it costs four points. Of all the new cards the Tyranids got with the 10th edition reboot and the latest Tyranid cards, this one is the one that changes the decks the most. One of the key things that has really hurt Tyranids over time is they have really squishy cards, or you have hard hitters that end up taking a bunch more damage than they need to because your only taunt is like 17 points. Having a second taunt option at all, let alone a taunt option that's under 10 points, is huge. And having a 4 point that's that beefy is really, really nice. So you can bet I'm going max bonuses on this one. But also, we just got a bunch of brand new Tyranid cards that I personally found much more exciting than the Space Marine ones, so I'm excited to try them out. Now, downside, I just talked about uh, Helbrecht and Tolmeron being really, really strong against Tyranids. This is basically the same but mirror match, so if I hit Helbrecht or Tolmeron, I'm going to be in trouble. So I put together decks for each of the Warlords. Oh, and we'll talk through the modifiers real quick. So this again is even playing field, so all of your cards are max level. Your special requisitions, so you're, you start with 400 deck points, which is absolutely huge. And Apocalypse, this is more difficult than normal. Uh, and you'll notice that as you're playing this, it's based on strikes and then a certain completion path instead of the usual plasma charges. So there's no time requirement to beat this you don't have to use up your charges as you go to lose chances to get this, which I really appreciate. And also the War Rewards themselves, you know exactly what you're going to get after your wins, which is nice too. But the downside is that you don't get to play with your own card levels, which I always kind of enjoy because that's how you get practice. Uh, I'll go ahead and start with one of these guys. I'm especially excited about the Parasite and Max Bonus Perfect. But at the same time, not getting to play with your own card levels is a bit of a bummer because I like getting that practice. But uh, I'm really excited about getting to do that because I have some of the new Tyranid cards, but they're like level 2, which I'm not going to put in a deck with any sense of competition in it. So this is a chance for you to see those cards fully fleshed out, for example, in action. And now most of these decks I'm going to play, you're going to see the... Uh, you're not going to see as many of those because I had to fill up the deck points um, and because those cards are mostly pretty cheap so it's actually somewhat difficult of course as a big game hunter first thing uh it's actually somewhat difficult to fill the deck if you include any of those cards let alone a lot of them this is one that's not new but it's one i don't have a high level of so we'll just go ahead and chow on down here and i'm really excited to get this guy high level there are a lot of decks he'll slot into and it was the free card i believe for getting high in the ladder immediately before secondary traits got released. So when I first saw it, I was kind of unimpressed. But now the more I see it, the more I'm like, yeah, I really should have worked harder to get that one. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. Quick reminder on the Parasite. You see the animation there. Whenever a friendly Tyranid card does a melee attack to an opposing card for the first time, that card becomes infested. So the attack does less damage. But then when that infested card dies from any effect, it doesn't have to be a melee attack, it will then deal... Uh, let's see, 60%? Yeah, no. So the attack deals 60% less damage to do the infestation, and when the infested card dies, it blows up for 40% of its base wound to adjacent cards. So if I take this guy down, which I should be able to do with this guy, yeah, it will uh, guarantee that the other two die. Because I will then hit them for everything they've got. Now, right out of the gate, Tyranid's the only warlord that Tyranids have who makes cards get stronger over the course of the game is the uh, Gosar. 
and Gosar is arguably the weakest of the Tyranid Warlords, excuse me, even at max level. So I'm not probably going to run Gosar. I may try it, but um, yeah, so this is going to be considerably more challenging than the last campaign, which I kind of appreciate because the last campaign was actually quite easy. Um, and I hope you all made it through too, otherwise I just was a real jerk. And so that is now infested, and I'm probably going to lose my Moloch over here, but it will be worth it because... Da, 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 da. Poof. A little cascade there. Uh, the Parasite is really, really powerful, and one I'm excited about because it does some interesting things. So it's a hard counter to um, Acheron, Captain Acheron, because his second life can be taken out by that extra splatter damage. So the big thing about it is that the... You can think of it this way, where it's just free extra damage. If you play it right, it's a really, really interesting strategic warlord, so I really like the trait. That hurt. Um, <laughs> first round. Brutal. All right, cool. This will be good. This will be good. I like it. So we've still got that target acquired, which is good, and he is infested. Perfect. So I should be able to fairly comfortably take him out, and then we'll see how this goes. This is against Azrael, who does the automatic buff. So he has exactly the uh, thing that I don't have in this deck, because my decks don't or my cards don't get stronger over time. So I have to really, really lean on that aggression and do as much uh, early damage as I can to make sure that I am putting a dent in these guys before they build up too strong. I'd rather hit Azrael than Helbrecht, but I'm sure I'm going to hit Helbrecht at some point. Another thing I haven't well that went well. Another thing I haven't mentioned about Tyranids here is that uh, both the decks that I mentioned being really strong in the last campaign, Tolmeron and Helbrecht, have a really, really strong theme. So either range for Tolmeron or melee for Helbrecht. Uh, Tyranids really don't have that. They do have themed decks, but not the same way. So I just did, let's see, let's see if I have. This is gonna be a tricky one because like I said, I really wanna try out some of the new cards. That just went away. I really want to try out some of the new cards, particularly this guy. Let's go ahead and do this and see how it goes. But I also really want that free card for the extra taunt, because I want to get that at leveled as high as I possibly can. This is one I want to run because it's all of my max level psychers. I believe this is every single psyker card in the Tyranid lineup. And it leaves 88 points on the table. Oh god, this is going to look terribly, but we're going to do it anyway. Because I want to see this thing fully fledged. Like, I want to see this thing on the board. Because I know it's a crazy powerful card with that stat line and those abilities, but... I haven't actually seen it. You gotta see it to really. Oh, great. Okay. You gotta see it to really experience what's going on. see how this goes. I also just realized that my recording thing may have gone away, so I'll double check in a second here. That'd be a real bummer if I have to start over, but uh, eh, we'll see. And just in case we haven't, this is just so max level poison that applies on the drop. Oh! And while I talked about Tyranids not having the same level of theme that uh, Space Marines do, they don't have, if they go all melee, they can't really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the other more adaptable decks or a pure melee deck from, say, Space Marines, for example. The exception is Psychic. I think Tyranids have actually the best Psychic lineup in the game because they have a combination of shields, they've got that Psychic um, Psionic Blast, they've got Poison Psyker, they've got a Furious Charge Psyker, all of their... Psychers have decent hit points, extremely high attack values, and useful traits. And there are a lot of them, all of which adds up to be a really, really frightening thing that there isn't really a comparable... There's really no comparison in other decks, or in other uh, factions. I say that, and I'm about to lose horribly, but we'll see here. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Maybe not so horribly. That was a nasty hit. But just like that is a devastating lineup. Even um, Grayfax, if you go really hard on the Psychers in Servants of the Emperor, Servants, Servants of the Emperor with Grayfax, 
uh, you get, what, three psychers? Maybe four if you dilute the bonus. This is a full deck of psychers. And of course, this is way over max points. But still, Tyranids have a bunch of different options of psychers that give you a lot of flexibility and can be insanely powerful. Much more so, I think, than most of the other factions can run. And that's including Eldar. Eldar has some of the most powerful individual psychers, but it's different. This still is going to be a tough matchup, but another thing too is that the Flyrant, a little flying hive tyrant here, is a really powerful endgame piece, even against Logan. So we'll uh, we'll see if this works. And I can't get too excited about this, because this is only round two, um, so I'm not going to hit anything too scary. But one of the things about Apocalypse is that it's somewhat boring in the way that uh, the difficulty level doesn't really creep much, where your difficulty level is your difficulty level all the way through. If you can win the first couple rounds, you should be able to beat the whole thing. Within reason, you may hit some nasty combination of traits that really counter your deck, that is going to happen, but not to the same degree that you do with the Plasma Charge campaigns. Because all your cards start at max level, and all your opponent's cards start at max level. There's not really that much... Uh, distance to go from there. <laughs> now I will say I'm very concerned about that melee bonus he's got over there. He could one-shot the flyer if I don't really, really hurt him or at least force him to use it. But that should not be a problem. I do still have one card in the deck and he's basically dead. Especially since it's going to take another hit from a trait. So he's dead. No matter what, I won't hit him back, but then the flying half turns ability will kill him at the end of this, even if I don't kill him with this drop. Ta-da! All right, so just to recap that, I left 88 points on the table and still won that very handily in a pretty bad matchup. Uh, so that is, uh, that's the thing. And we're going to play one more match real quick just to show off. Oh, I'm so excited about that card. No, I'm so excited. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play the... Ooh, let's see what's in here first. Oh, Tyranids and Space Marines. Oh, that's good stuff. Pretty stoked about that. Okay, we're going to play one more match. I'll choose which Warlord here. Let's see. Ah, uh, we did these two. Let's go ahead and do... I'm going to do some of the weird shooting ones. This is one I used in the end. Or this is the last one I built to go ahead and highlight some of the shooting cards. No, let's do Zima. Any second now. Oh, yeah. So this is one I really wanted to include in here. Just because it's got the weirdest combination of stats. But I am really interested to see it perform. And then, of course, the max level Screamer Killer is going to be just a monster. ba ba da ba ba da ba 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 and this will be my last one, then I'll take a break in this video, and we'll uh, go from there. <laughs> Max Fear, Barrage, base attack of 96, plus Zemuth's ability. I mean, I'm going to go up against some scary stuff here, but that is crazy powerful. Of course, so is that lineup, so that's going to be brutal. Eh, that'll work. We'll see how this goes. I should be able to pretty comfortably take this guy out, especially with the max bonus and uh, or with uh, Zemuth's trait. And Zemuth's trait, just to recap, gives your cards an extra 75% damage the first time in a game that they attack with their ranged attack. So this will one-shot all of these guys, which they will then come back because of Akaran's trait, but the barrage on the Screamer Killer will take out at least one of them and put them in a pretty bad spot for the following turn. So I've already got a significant lead, which will quickly erode, but then as soon as I deploy new cards, they again will get that super attack bonus. And he's going to be pretty diminished by the time we get there. Even that, wow. So that fear really made a difference because it didn't kill this guy, which that uh, death blow should have. I see more fear. I have a lot of fear, that's unfortunate. So here I'm going to do the stupid thing, I'm going to go ahead and shoot him, because I'm outnumber him dramatically, deck points wise. Um, that is going to mean I'll take more damage back than I should, but I do need to start whittling these guys down, because that's a lot to chew through with that fear. Uh, ooh, yeah, alright. 
And he has... Oh, man. Alright, I should have put it in front of him, because he's only got rank 2 fear because he is epic. As opposed to this guy who has rank 4 fear because he is legendary. Which is over-explaining. And now, remember that that ranged bonus applies to the entire ranged attack, so the first time a barrage card shoots in a Zemo deck, it does a bunch of extra damage that it otherwise would not. Including to adjacent cards, so that's always a thing to keep in mind. About to lose my Screamer Killer, and I'm bleeding cards more quickly than I would like, but his are also significantly weakened, and mine are very strong in melee. Because this is a Tyranid deck, it's a weird generalist deck, where even though it's a ranged deck, it is still doing things as if it was also a melee deck. Oh, dirty. Still, I am going to kill the adjacent card just because I have Barrage, so never leave home without your Barrage. And even though I will not kill that, I will certainly soften it up a bit. And then we'll get to put some work into Akron himself before my Warlord drops. And Zima always has a uh, significant advantage against any beefy Warlord because Zima's ability on the card itself is that it has target acquired that will also target Warlords. So every single card on the table will shoot the opposing Warlord for two turns, which is really powerful against Akron because it's one fewer bodyguard you have to clear at the absolute worst case. And usually, will give you a win where most warlords would actually lose in that final matchup, assuming you you play on your turn and not on the opponent's turn. At which point, that gives them an easy uh, opening to just annihilate your warlord. All right, so easy win, cool. All And I talked about my Tyranid cards not getting better over the course of the match. That's not strictly true if you bring a lot of Barrage cards, which is a really great way to play this. Or not Barrage, excuse me, Berserk cards. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Epic has the precision shot. Oh, dirty. You forget that with your Epic cards. If you don't play them very much and you forget about the secondary traits, it's easy to forget what they actually have at max level. So that's cool. So there you go. Hopefully that helped with some deck ideas, uh, and good luck. Holler with comments and let me know how it went.